Hi there, come on in. It's Thursday night, March 16th, the year 2000. For all practical purposes, ice fishing is done throughout virtually all of the state. Uh, we're in a transition period. I'm gonna use this time to acquaint you with the life and times of the Helgramite. Oh, a vicious little bugger that makes a good smallmouth bass bait. We'll watch what Helgramites do underwater and we'll catch up on some other happenings in the great outdoors. So please, stay tuned. Last week, I showed you a trip we took last summer with Pat Witherell and Dave Coster of Grand Rapids. We were fishing for smallmouth bass on a river that's in the Grand Rapids area. Now, I don't want to pinpoint it because you can find fishing holes like this all over the state. They're small, they're special to the people who fish them. And if you want to find places like this, get a map book and look around. That's how fishermen find their special spots. Now, the smallmouth bass were biting on this evening in June, but the bite of a smallmouth isn't anything that can hurt you. What we were using for bait, though, is a different story. Our bait did bite. According to many bass fishermen, one of the best baits you can use for smallmouth bass is a helgramite. Now, a helgramite is the larva of a winged insect called the Dobson fly. This larva lives on the bottom of rocky streams. Fishermen gather helgramites by rolling over rocks and letting the helgramites drift into a net. Helgramites are about three inches long, and they are ugly. There's no doubt about that. Now, this drawing of a helgramite is from the book Fly Fishing for Dummies. The dangerous part of a helgramite is its mouth. It looks like big pinchers, but they're used to bite and chew its food. Now, here's a photo of a Dobson fly that we got off the Internet. Now, the fly also has the big chewing mouth. The mouth of the male Dobson fly can grow quite elongated. Now, that mouth probably can't hurt you. But the helgramite, the larva, has a chewing mouth that can chew a hole in your thumb. That's what a helgramite did to me. God! Damn! Oh, you bet that hurt. I've never had a bug bite me and draw so much blood. Pat Witherall says that uh, you pick up a helgramite from behind and you have to grab its head, otherwise it can bend around and bite you. Once you've got the helgramite by the head, take your fish hook and slip it under the collar that's just behind its head. It'll slip under there easily. That keeps the helgramite alive and the hook is exposed so you can hook a bass that picks up the helgramite for a meal. Now They stay on your hook really well and I often caught three or four bass on one helgramite. Fish the helgramite right on the bottom. You can use a small split shot sinker pinched on the line or up a foot or so for a little weight, but just let the helgramite roll over the bottom in the current. Now, helgramites will try to grab rocks and branches in the stream. That might feel like a fish is nibbling when it's just a helgramite trying to hang on to something. The point of the hook, though, is facing up, and it doesn't get snagged as often as you might think. It's either a fish or a stick. It's a stick. I caught a stick. <laughs> The good news is I still have the Helgramite. So the Helgramite grabs the stick, huh? That was... <laughs> I didn't see that. Yeah, look at that. See how they can grab? See, so that's what it'll do on the bottom. It'll grab hold of a... grab hold of something like that and get you snagged. See, it's pulling against the, the hook. It's got those pinchers there. So, yeah, he's, he's hanging right under that stick. I mean, I'm pulling. Isn't that something? Hmm. They are just the darndest things. Cute little buggers, aren't they? I think they're only cute to mother helgramites. I haven't found any person who thinks they're attractive, but smallmouth bass do. And when I was just goofing around in the shallow water, I found that crayfish find them attractive too. He's got the helgramite, he's pulling on it. Look at that. That sometimes, you know, when you think you have a fish on, mm -hmm. you, got a, you got a crawdad there grabbing it, like that's doing right there. He wants it bad. 
It knows it's there. What's it in the worst way? There he comes. So some way the crawdad must eat the eat the bait. I mean, it's got to have a mouth and it's got to eat. Isn't that wild? Isn't that wild? The things you see in the stream. So we're standing here with bare legs. I don't know why. That's the Helgramite. Even though it's ugly, smallmouth bass love it. But always remember, the Helgramite has a heck of a bite. When a critter like a Helgramite bites you, like it bit me, some people say, and I don't really buy it, but I've developed great respect for that critter. Well, I'll tell you what I did. I developed a great dislike for that critter after it nailed me. But that's not really a healthy attitude to maintain. I mean, if you want to fish with those things. And at our Fishing Awards banquet last year, uh, both Dave Coster and Pat Witherall came, and Pat brought with him up on stage, unbeknownst to me, a Helgramite, and sat it on my shoulder. Well, hey, I reacted a little differently this time. Come on up, you guys. Yeah, you're out of the penalty box. These guys, let's see, what did we do so far? Congratulations on a great fishing year. This has been a great year. And I want to say, this isn't a very nice way to treat somebody that's the only one that brought you Don't a Don't you dare! <laughs> you son of a gun! Holy crap! That is a live Helgramite. The only one that brought you a birthday. You from. just get away just from like me. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh, he's picking it up. Hey, hey, hey. Holy, no, look at that ugly. Here, you can have him, Fred. Hold him up there by the tail. <laughs> hold it by the tail, nothing. Show us how to hold it, Fred. Oh, that is one. That, that's uglier than I remember. <laughs> Get a shot of that there, Matt. That... No, he didn't. He wouldn't. Oh, I could, I could get him here. Hold it. Oops. Watch my thumb here. Ooh. Hold it. I'm going to grab him now. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of the abuse I'm taking. I'm going to get yeah, this Helgramite. Tough enough. Ah! Ow. I got him. <laughs> but I got him by the head. You got him good. That's good. I got him. You darn right. I got him good, and I hope it hurts. <laughs> Holding a Helgramite gives you a certain sense of power. You can actually back people up with a Helgramite. Now, I was glad that Pat Witherall brought this to the banquet. I was able to confront my fear and conquer it. From a bloody thumb to a commanding grip on a Helgramite. Now next time, I will be able to bait my own hook. A few weeks ago, we ran that footage, the home video from Stacy and Chris Dent in Lansing. This was in the city of Lansing. Coyotes were running around the yard for several weeks and then they disappeared. Well, we thought that was the end of it. Uh, Chris called me the other day to, to tell me to check the paper. Coyote caught at furniture store. Now, this is in, in, in Delta Township, less than a half a mile from where I live. It was in Value City parking lot. There's a coyote right there. I mean, there's people pulling out and apparently sick or something. But uh, the, the county sheriff and animal control captured it, and they have it under observation now. But I tell you, these coyotes are becoming a real problem. I don't know what it's going to take for the DNR to address this issue. I also said in the segment that I did about wolves, how wolves had attacked horses up in Minnesota, <laughs> I get a... Facts here of apparently from the Bay City Times, coyotes attack horses. This is around West Branch. No kidding. These, these people, the DeWitt family recently, recently returned from a weekend-long snowmobile trip to find something wrong with their six-year-old horse, Rosie. The hair from the lower portion of her front right leg appeared as if it had been chewed. No signs of a struggle in the paddock where Rosie and another horse roam. Jane DeWitt and her family were puzzled. The skin was broken. There were four holes on both sides of her legs the size of 50 cent pieces. Then 
the key to this is, three weeks later, they saw what the deal was. Uh, the family was eating dinner when they saw three coyotes near the paddock. This time, the animals attacked the family's 10-year-old gelding, Sam. They were trying to get at its feet, and behind it, he was kicking him. He put up a good fight. Coyotes attacking horses in Michigan. You think coyotes aren't a problem? Think again. Have a little quiz here on a piece of fishing equipment. That's what this is. I mean, it's a plastic gutter with an end cap. What in the world would this be used for in fishing? Well, Bill Gruen, DNR fisheries biologist, gave this to me a couple weeks ago, and let him explain. I saw this pattern for a measuring board, and you know, like most anglers, I get out in the boat, I catch a fish, and I gotta measure him, and I put the nose on the end of my tape measure, and I try to keep the nose on the end and make sure it doesn't go too far and it's not too far back and measure them at the other end. And you know how those results are. But as a professional fish biologist, we always use a measuring board. And you just slide the nose up against the stop and measure them back along, along the tape. And I saw this pattern in uh, one of the outdoor magazines, you know, publications I was reading. And as all it is is a simple piece of uh, plastic uh, eaves trough the ruler I used, I got from our own law division. It's one of the wrap uh, sticker, ruler stickers they have. So the only thing that I had to purchase was the end, uh, an eaves trough end. You just have to make sure that the eaves trough end is the same brand as the eaves troughing, because I did run into that problem, and they don't fit together. And um, put your tape, sticker tape, or you could, if you want to use a wood or a plastic ruler, you could put some small screws up through the bottom to secure it. Uh, maybe you could secure it with... Um, uh, silicone adhesive and then put your end on it and to measure your fish just slide his nose up to the stop pinch his tail to get the longest possible measurement and uh, you got a good measurement of your fish and you don't have to worry about whether the nose of the fish is on zero or some other place on your ruler so so I just I've been making these I found this and it I, you know, I like to do things with fishing tackle and make stuff so I've been making these Fisheries biologist Bill Gruen is retiring from the DNR on March 31st. Uh, he enjoys making these things, not to sell. He gives them away, but it's something you could make, maybe for a Father's Day gift or for a fishing buddy. Uh, but I do have one suggestion. Um, if you tend to catch fish longer than this, uh, you might want to get a longer piece of uh, the plastic gutter because, you know, some of those big ones, you want to know how long they are, too. How about that? 